guys, it's Viv of Everyday Lifters. Um, so <laughs> sometime last year, I started a series of interviews called 21 Questions, and the last weightlifter I had interviewed was Sarah Robles in back in January of 2019. Now guys, it's taken me a whole year to edit and, vi and publish this video because as many of you guys know, I had some personal things going on, so I had to stop all projects, stop all weightlifting photography, really, and almost like stop entirely like all my training but that stuff happens, it's okay. And I'm now just slowly trying to get a handle <laughs> and trying to get back into some things that I was working on in 2019, but I could not start the new year without publishing uh, Sarah Robles' interview. 21 questions is a series of questions that have nothing to do with weight, <laughs> nothing to do with weightlifting. Now, if you're in the weightlifting community and you've never heard of Sarah Robles, Google her name, guys. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. She's a two-time Olympian, American weightlifter. Totally a micro introduction because there's so much more I could say about her. Uh, so without further ado, here's Sarah Robles with 21 questions. Listen, thank you so much for coming on doing this. Um, I'm really excited that you're on here and totally fangirling and like nervous because I want to do a good job. <laughs> I have a question though, because I just want to get this correct. How do you pronounce your last name? I know we were going back and forth on this. So now that I have you here. Well, it is Spanish, but I kind of say it American. Like my whole family will say will say Robles. I say Robles. I know I also need to pronounce or roll the R's Robles, but <laughs> whatever. Just don't say Robles. <laughs> don't say Robles. Other than that, I'm good. Um, do you prefer one over the other? Uh, Robles. Robles. Okay. We'll start question number one. Describe yourself in three words. Silly, strong, I mean, that one's obvious. I should have thought of something else. Uh, silly, strong, and I'll say smart. If you could get yourself anything, what would you get? Question, probably a truck. Really? Uh, for why? Yeah. Like... Uh, I feel like I'm suited for a truck, but um, I think a truck would suit a lot of would serve me well with a lot of things that I want to do with transporting equipment, moving, because I move a lot, okay. um, camping, fishing, um, some of the future adventures that I want to do in my life, a truck would be helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, what is one thing, what is one thing that annoys you the most? Being inefficient. Hmm. And I, I, I do that a lot myself and it, it's really frustrating, but it's like, why are you doing things in this particular order where you could do them in this way and it would be just so much faster? Um, just get it done, you know. Mm -hmm. Take too long to get places, just go. <laughs> like, <laughs> what are you waiting for? <laughs> the rest of your life is going, just go. <laughs> what's your favorite summer activity? Uh, probably camping. Uh, what scared you as a kid? Did you have anything that, like, growing up or maybe a scary movie? Um, my first nightmare was after watching a Freddy Krueger movie. So we grew up watching horror movies, so it was no real big deal. And just one, I don't know if it was a uh, nightmare on Elm Street or what I was watching, but I had a nightmare that night and I didn't watch Freddy Krueger, uh, specifically a Freddy Krueger movie for like years afterwards. But the nightmare was something like, he was like 50 feet tall, just like barreling through the city. My brother and my dad, my brother and I were pushing my dad in his wheelchair and we're pushing him across like the mouth of Volcano and like the bridge is like, you know, <laughs> and it's like falling apart behind us. Oh my gosh. And I just, and it had nothing to do with the movie. Like what do any of those components have to do with that? It's like Indiana Jones and meets Freddy Krueger. Oh my gosh. But I had a nightmare and I didn't like it, but I was never really like apprehensive or scared of a lot of things. I've always been cautious. Okay. But like, I wasn't like, oh, there's a boogeyman under my bed, or whatever dumb things that people are usually afraid of when they're younger. When they're young, yeah. <sighs> if you were given three wishes, what would you wish for? We wish I had the opportunity to get to know my dad more. Probably would wish that I had a better relationship with my brother. I wish for like those emotional kind of things. Um, I don't want stuff. I don't know. I guess I wish that I can make a good impact on people in a way that I think is going to help the betterment of the future, like overall, not just like one person, but 
be able to make a real change. I don't know what way, but I guess whatever way would make the most important of an impact. Sarah, that's amazing. Okay. This is a little bit more, you're gonna make me cry. Uh, this is a little bit more funnier. How many chickens would it take to kill an elephant? Probably a handful. You can tie them up and then shove them down the elephant's throat and yes. check it. Yes. Toilet paper, over or under? Over. According to the person who created toilet paper, the, the, um, the patent shows an illustration of the toilet paper being over. Also, it's more efficient to just grab it. Again, efficiency. Efficiency. I don't have to like dig under and roll it like this <laughs> until a piece comes off and then I can grab it. Also, like toilet paper? Ugh. You travel internationally, you find out all kinds of things, like bidets. Like, bidets are awesome. Like, what's with America? Like, let's get with the program, guys. Guys, are you listening right now? So if your toilet paper is, is under, you're not being efficient. Sarah's telling you right now to change it. <laughs> get in there, poop, wipe, get out. <laughs> we don't have time to mess with toilet paper. <laughs> is a hot dog a sandwich? <clears throat> well, by definition, a sandwich is two pieces of bread with something in between. So if a hot dog is shoved in between, or a hot dog wiener is shoved between two pieces of bread, then yes, but if it's in a bun, no, because the bun is not two separate pieces of bread. What's your cell phone, uh, cell phone wallpaper right now? <laughs> I thought you were gonna say number. <laughs> what? I, like, I thought you were gonna ask me for my number. What is your cell phone number? <laughs> Mm, that's a weird question. What's your social security number and your birthday? <laughs> I think what I think it's what my cell phone came with. I didn't kind of like get too crazy. Um, the cell phone that I have is from the the Olympics, and so all the Olympic and Paralympic athletes got free cell phones. Oh, so it's kind of like a dark black background. Well, I mean black is dark, so that's <laughs> anyway. It's a black background, and then it's got white Olympic rings in the in the middle. Oh, cool. Coffee or tea? Um, neither for myself. If you had the chance, would you change something in history? What would the world be like if it was filled with female copies of you? Oh, gosh. Pretty ridiculous. <laughs> um, <laughs> we need to really finish it, I have to tell you. <laughs> well, you'd think so. I planned my, my travel uh, the other day, and it was a complete cluster cuss, and I have to plan another flight I'm like oh my gosh am I gonna leave myself to do this um <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking I was not thinking when I when I was making my my travel plans um <sighs> I think I think things would be a lot funnier that's for sure I mean there I present myself as being a lot I mean, obviously, my social media, you get a little glimpse of how silly or kind of weird I am, but, like, I'm pretty goofy and klutzy, and, like, last night I had, like, a date, and I dropped the bottom of my cup, and it fell down, and all the water splashed immediately into my face. Oh, no. And I was like, great. <laughs> what, what a way to make an impression. So that's the kind of, that's the kind of stuff that I do. Um, definitely would be a lot sillier, a lot, a lot funnier, that's for sure. you could live anywhere in the world for a year, where would it be? I'd probably like to spend some time in Scandinavia. Um, probably spend more time in, uh, in Denmark. I have some family, I, I'm interested in genealogy, so some of my family goes through Denmark, and I just found out more specifically also um, Norway and Sweden. Oh, so wow, Sarah. that's cool. Yeah. I'd be really interested to see, and the way that the patric patronymical names go, like it's it's almost too difficult for me to understand which family members are which because the last names are constantly changing. Huh. And so it would be nice to go there, be there, and do a lot of research and see where my family's from, kind of like what things are like over there, and get my genealogy taken care of by maybe a professional. <laughs> uh, do you believe in ghosts? Yes. Okay. Yes. I do too. If you were getting, given a chance to go to the moon, would you go? No. Hmm. Any reason? Well, I think the planet, our own planet has everything we need. The moon seems kind of boring without, outside of the novelty of, I went to the moon. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
I mean, I, I hardly doubt anybody who has uh, really seen the surface of the moon or have walked the surface views it as a novelty. That's true. But um, I don't really see the need to go elsewhere. I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm going to walk around in a suit and then I'm going to be scared the entire time that something's going to go wrong. I'm like, is an alien going to come get me? Is there going to be a problem in my suit? It, am I going to crash and burn upon arrival? What if I land in the ocean? Am I going to get tangled up in all my equipment and drown? Like, all of that could easily be avoided by just staying here on planet Earth. Earth. And not going. Is that thing made of cheese or dust? Like, whatever. Apocalypse is coming. Who are the three it's- people you want on your team? <clears throat> Probably Tim, my coach. Uh, I always laugh. I was like, I'm going to go to Tim's house because he's got guns. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so probably somebody who's who's skilled in weaponry. So someone like my my uncle who was like a Vietnam sniper or something like that. Um, and then probably... This is funny, but I used to say, um, I don't know, people probably don't know him anymore unless you're like my age or kind of older, but Colin Ito, he, um, he was a teammate of mine and he's, he's a weightlifter um, from Bonzel, California. Anyway, he, he watches all these like horror movies and zombie movies and stuff like that. I'm like, that guy would be an expert because he's seen so many movies. Like he knows every possible scenario that can happen. So I would like have Colin and then like maybe my uncle Jim or Tim and, uh, a third person? I don't know. Maybe like Bear Grylls or something. Like somebody who really knows survival crap. What if you, okay, if you had to choose between a wonderful romantic relationship that would end only after a year, would you have rather that or a so so relationship that would last your entire life? Which one's going to give me kids? <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Let's see. I would say yeah, so I'm likely not going to marry somebody probably after a year of knowing them. So then I probably won't be able to get married and squirt out babies. So that might not be so fruitful. Okay. Like, I don't know. It's like a, a so-so relationship. I mean, like, obviously you want passion, but a so-so relationship, like you could still be loving each other. Like what, what is it? Just like no sparks. I don't know. What is the so so but I guess you can fix, you can work on that too, right? That's something that can get worked on. Yeah, those are skills that you can develop. Most of the time when, I mean, I have a couple of friends that are marriage counselors and they're like, some of the reasons that marriages are kind of falling apart, not this is the stand of the whole, which is like, you're not working on it. You know, you're not spending time together. And so maybe that's something that can come around. Like how many arranged marriages are there, you know, in the world where it's not, you're not necessarily marrying for love, but instead of something that, that's this, that has a spark right away, it's something that slowly stews and develops into something later. Mm-hmm. So it's not to say that it wouldn't be a good marriage. I like it. I don't it. a long, low one. I mean, I don't want to die alone and have like 100 cats or... <laughs> you don't have to live that way. For <laughs> them. Then I can have some kids and let my genes go out into the world and do some cool stuff. Yeah. I see, I see my kids in that way. Some of the stuff that they, like, I'm excited for them to what they're going to produce and put out there in the world. It is that's, it's exciting. That's really cool. Um, describe an ideal date. <coughs> Excuse me. I had, uh, I had this conversation before. I was like, We're, it's, a pic- it's a picnic in a park. The guy is wearing a tuxedo and a top hat. And we eat steak and asparagus. <laughs> What? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I just think we're we're everyone's being nice. And we're just having fun. It it doesn't matter what we're doing. I I am not like a picky person. I do not have crazy expectations. I just want to enjoy my time with somebody and, and have fun. And people want to go out and have expensive dinners and go on vacations like that's not important to me so this the net this question probably goes back to the other one but where would you like to visit it's probably um i don't know i guess visiting and living is two different things but if you wanted to visit a place where would you go uh i really like to go to easter island i think that'd be cool 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I like all that that stuff that you're going to watch about. I like spooky and kooky, and I love history and Mm -hmm. anthropology in particular. I'm not a person that's going to be able to climb Mount whatever and see something that, like, only three people in National Geographic have ever seen. (laughs) like let's be real <laughs> <laughs> if you had a time machine would you go back in time or into the future no hmm. um no because i feel like things all happen specifically the way they did for a reason and tampering with time is um not a good thing uh-huh. if i were i would be like um sam from quantum leap and I would be like changing little tiny things in history within my own time frame of my life to to make things better like be involved with like for him it was like the civil rights movement and stuff like that I'd be doing that kind of stuff but nothing on a you know like a global scale like oh kill Hitler (laughs) (laughs) it would just be like make sure that lady doesn't cross the the train tracks at that very minute it would be that kind of stuff but um no, I don't really have an interest. Also, my theory about time travel is kind of different than others. I feel like if I were to go back in time, then, like, I would kind of, like, Benjamin Button myself. Oh. And then, eventually, like, I would get to the point where, like, I wouldn't exist anymore, mm-hmm. and then that would be the end. So no time then, travel. Like, that would be the end of my reverse time travel, right? And then if yes. I went to the future, then I would just age exponentially, like, forever young, except for I would die at the end. So I just don't see it as being a very fruitful process because I don't see how you can avoid that process while traveling time. But hey, I'm no quantum physicist. How am I? Supposed <laughs> to but this all this? this all goes back to your efficiency. Like you're totally thinking like, okay, how is this? This is not going to help me if I go back yeah. in time or go in the future. No, that's good. Um, all right, we are done here with the questions. Okay, so do you have your paper and pencil or your pen? Okay. Yeah. We're going to draw your coach, your coach's face. Okay, okay. so don't do anything yet. Just draw, just, draw, just draw a circle for the head, just so we have a base. And I get to, I get to draw my circle now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ooh. There is. All right, and no cheating. Okay, there's yours. Okay, so when I say go, we have 10 seconds to draw as many features as we can on Coach Tim. And go. Okay, time's up. Uh, (laughs) Hey, I didn't do so bad. He's got kind of an egghead, though. (laughs) Okay. That's pretty good. That's like Van Gogh meets uh, some uh, Picasso. That's pretty good, Sarah. I tend to do like his eyes are kind of squinty, and then <laughs> he says that his nose is like uh, the barrel of like a, a shotgun, and then he's got a, a mustache, and then he's got like a scar right here. So like I, that's that's what this line is. Those yeah, are his lips. Do you see this? So if you've been watching all the, all the episodes up until this point, the weightlifters have been killing it with this. I apparently suck. Like, I'm really bad at this. Because <laughs> you, you suck at knowing what my coach looks like by heart? What the heck? <laughs> you ready, guys? Yeah. <laughs> How cute! <laughs> oh my gosh! It looks like a little kid drawing that you put on your fridge. <laughs> oh. I'm going to hang it up. With pride. <laughs> you that to Tim, you would crack up. <laughs> oh my gosh, Sarah, thank you so much for coming on. This was a blast. I had so much fun talking with you. Um, so you. what's 2019, what's, uh, what's in store for you? What's going on? <clears throat> Let me shake this cough. Yeah. Um, 2019, I'd like to break the American slash Pan Am record in the snatch. Um, that'll be the last goal that I've had in my career to break or to accomplish. There we go. Um, I just keep plugging my way into setting myself up to hopefully qualify for the Olympics. So I just got to meet, meet, meet the standards of competing in all six of my meets. 
um, that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm thinking Tokyo, but the goal is, I mean, someone asked me what my New Year's resolutions were, so I guess that's, I don't really do that. I just think it's dumb. It's stuff that you should be doing all the time anyway, but anywho, I want to keep my room cleaner on a more consistent basis. Okay. Um, so I just kind of like wait until I can't take it anymore, and then I clean my room. That's not the way to do things. Not very efficient. <laughs> And then I want to go on more dates. Okay. <laughs> As if, you don't, if you don't follow Sarah's stories, she like, and those are real, those are real messages you receive from men, right? Those are, those are real messages. You guys need to go on and read some of these messages that these men sent to her because I don't, you, it's. They're ridiculous. It's on average, how many do you think you get? Like, like on a week? Well, okay. So some people get kind of confused because some, some of the messages I get, like, people are, what do what the young folks say, sledding into my DMs. So, <laughs> they're like, on Instagram or Facebook, they're coming into my inboxes, and they're trying to proposition me in whatever way. And I say, no, no. And then that usually goes wrong, because people can't take no for an answer. Mm-hmm. Um, patriarchy. And then um, the rest of them are generally, like, either through the dating app, or if it gets enough, like they've shown that they're an okay enough person to get my phone number, then they, ch- I mean, inevitably everyone just turns out to be awful. So <laughs> the rest are from like actual dating site, like things. So um, it's been interesting, but I, that I don't really have a super active dating life in itself. Like I'm trying to, I'm putting myself out there, mm-hmm. but to, like actually get a date is like the next step. Usually everyone's too awful. Like I'm not going to, go out with dumb people so they prove themselves to be very dumb very early on oh, so like, yes <laughs> like very very immediately and so um I tend not to go on a lot of dates I don't have time for that but um I should have a lot of time for dates but no time for nonsense so what is that clean, keep room clean go on more dates I just need practice I'm 30 I have like no idea what I'm doing I want to get married eventually so you know that kind of stuff um what was the other? There's something else. Whatever. I guess it's not important. <laughs> lift heavier weights. Lift heavier weights. Yeah. That's just awesome. Get, get all the gains I can get. <laughs> um, where can people find you on social media? Well, duh, if they're not, they have to be following you, but. Yeah. If you're on, uh, if you're on Facebook and I don't know you, don't follow my personal page. You will be added to the pile of ig- ignoring you. Um, but you can follow Sarah Robles fan page. Um, most of that is going to be the same content you're going to find on my Instagram page because they're linked. Um, but occasionally I'll post something on there that's n- not related. But anywho, my my Twitter and my Instagram handle are the same, but they have different content. Um, I'm not on Twitter very often, but they're Olympian, Robles and Olympian. Uh, R-O-B-L-Y-M-P-I-A-N. And that's pretty much it. I have a website. Um, if you cannot contact me, in any way, it's because I'm either ignoring you or you're not interneting right because I'm pretty much everywhere. Like, <laughs> you can, you, I can be found. I can be found. She can be, yes. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much, Sarah. We're going to say bye to our friends and fans here and I'm sure bye. the many men that are watching as well. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. I really appreciate it. This was fun. Guys, wasn't that so much fun? I could really, I could talk to him forever. And I'm hoping that like, I don't know, we'll see how my schedule goes for 2020, (laughs) maybe even closer to 2021. I'd love to go visit her and just like uh, record some of her training sessions and just do a little bit more talking. And uh, so yeah, so anyway, but I hope you guys have a fabulous holiday and will I be doing more of these? I'm not gonna say anything here on camera. (laughs) We will see, so you'll have to stay tuned. Adios for now.